It's really important when you think about people on the autism spectrum to not focus in on one thing. And I think a lot of times we have that tendency to do that. A lot of people, for example, will say to me, well, they have problems with their melatonin and melatonin is important in promoting sleep and we give them melatonin for treatment. So clearly melatonin is important, but it's not the only thing. What I like to say is you can have the best drug, whether it be melatonin or another medicine, you can have like the best drug that's ever been, been invented. But if the kid is up late watching TV or playing video games or has obstructive sleep apnea or something else going on, that drug isn't going to work very well because it's being counteracted by all the other things that are going on with that kid, including the screens, including um, maybe being really stressed, including sleep apnea. So I believe, and many other colleagues of mine believe, that you really have to take a holistic approach to these kids. And when you think about the causes of sleep problems in autism, you need to be thinking holistically. So what are the medical issues going on with this child or adult? Uh, do they have sleep apnea? Do they have gastrointestinal disease, constipation, reflux? Uh, do they have seizures? And then what medicines might they be taking for anxiety, depression, ADHD? Um, what might be going on with their behavior, meaning not how well they're behaving, but what are they doing behaviorally to affect their sleep? Are they in front of their screens too much? Are they drinking too much Coke, caffeine, uh, coffee? Are they using alcohol? Are adults with on the spectrum using alcohol, which can interfere with their sleep? It can help you fall asleep, but then you wake up in the middle of the night. Um, you know, so, so lots of different reasons that they might be having a sleep problem that go beyond saying, well, they have bad genes or um, they have a problem with their melatonin, just really getting at the root causes. And that's what I try to do as a sleep specialist is I, I take a very comprehensive, thorough history. Uh, I do sleep studies when I'm worried about, for example, sleep apnea or leg movements. Uh, I try to address sleep behaviorally with good sleep habits, uh, making sure we're getting enough exercise, enough light. All of those things are, are super important, getting off our screens at night. Uh, and that way, I think we can be more effective in our treatments. 